Are you a first time GM? You wanna make sure that you're not second rate, right, like us? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over some first time GM player tips here, coming right up. Hi guys, welcome back to SRD, I'm Scott. I'm Ryan. And today we're gonna to talk about those first time GM player tips. Now, we've already discussed a lot of this. As a matter of fact, our entire channel is dedicated to this. Um, if you look at the way we've set apart our playlists, it is our step, it is our six step process on exactly how six. to, yep, how to, how to GM. Um, going everything from, you know, putting your concept together, selling it to your players, your writing, your running, your prepping, your feedback. These kinds of things are very important, and I absolutely suggest that you, you know, click this link up here and you and you follow those, right? You, yep. you check those videos out. There's some of our earlier videos, so they're a little meh, but you know, hey, give them a shot anyway. Um, but if you do like our videos, go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button, and be sure to share with your friends. But ring today, the bell. don't forget to ring the <laughs> bell. Smash the bell. Smash the bell. But today, we're going to talk about um, some more specific things that we can talk about for those first-time players. And one of the biggest recommendations that I can, can give to a first-time player, a first-time GM, is to play the game first. Um, I read a lot of the times on Facebook and Twitter and, and Reddit that people are jumping in jamming first. Like head first, never played the game, never looked at the book. They like, they're like, oh man, I just ordered a book and it's my first time ever running a game and I've never played it before. Uh, the only time that this is really acceptable is when all of your players are brand new to it. Yes. When you cannot find yeah. a game at all, absolutely. And then when all your players are brand new, you kind of have that little leeway where you're all learning. Yeah. And But at the same time, you can all learn together. Yeah. Which is really nice. Yeah. And that's, that is a great example of, of a time when it's okay. Um, the, the problem is, is if you don't know how to play, if you don't know how to play, how it feels to sit in the player's seat, it's very difficult to sit on the other side yeah. to run the game. Um, it, the same way that it's very difficult for a coach, um, a football coach, to coach football if he's never been a player. Yep. They don't know the game. They don't know the, the player's side of it. They don't know the, the rules as well. Um, and it's much, you can take a, a, a football team and a coach that has no idea how to play, um, but honestly, that team's just kind of going to run yeah. itself. Um, and it's going to run back and forth across the field with really no direction from that coach. Yep. And that's kind of what you're going to get when you have a GM that has no idea what's going on. So don't feel bad about it. Find a game that you can either find at your store, and we have a whole video on how to find players and how to find games. Um, but find a place that you can go and at least try it out first to get a feel for it. But if you can't, there's some other things that you can do as well. Uh, Twitch. Twitch yep. has blown up huge mm -hmm. here lately with videos. There with channels that have videos up of people playing. Um, this there's, I mean, and not only do you just get to see how the game is played, but you can see it from multiple people. Yes. So you can kind of pick and choose the stuff that you like and the stuff that you don't like. Right. I, I definitely wouldn't recommend watching only one channel. Um, I've met a lot of people lately who have only ever watched Critical Role, and so their expectations for Dungeons and Dragons specifically is is what Critical Role is. And let's be honest, we're not all voice actors that are incredibly yep. amazing people uh, and, and a story that is written <laughs> the way that it is written. Yep. Um, that's not what you're gonna find typically at your normal Dungeons and Dragons yep. game. Um, you're gonna find some good stories, you're gonna find some good friends, but on that level, that is a, that is a level that's up here um, and those are rare moments that you will remember those games for the rest of your life. I have a few of them that I can remember, they're just yep. perfect. Um, but so check them out. Find some smaller streamers. Honestly, you want to see what Dungeons and Dragons is really like? Find a small channel. Find someone yep. that is has less than you know a couple thousand subscribers. Um, they're just out there in the beginning, just like us, you know, as a channel. And they're out there. They're working hard, but they're not. They're not famous people, right? They're just normal Joes mm -hmm. and Sarahs like the rest of us. Um, and not to mention, you can also grow with their community. If yeah. you continue to watch them, then you can, you know. People, they build relationships like that, mm -hmm. you know. Pretty soon there's people calling out what to do inside the game and yeah. you're using that back and forth and all this, this fun stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Um, after that, I mean, once you, either you play the game or at least watch the game, um, learn your rules, right? So these is your toolkit, okay? Learn them. I know that there's a large push right now for um, more storytelling, more role-playing, and those kinds of things, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Pathfinder and all of these role-playing games, they have a rule set. And if you take that frame, you still have to work within that frame, okay? 
if you if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, for example, and you run nothing but role play and you have zero combat, then you're not playing Dungeons and Dragons anymore. Um, Don Ford Cat Don Ford Cast just did a video about this, talking about you know is Dungeons and Dragons a role playing mm-hmm. game? Um, I absolutely agree with where he's coming from. If you if you take away one of the three pillars that the game is based upon, you're not playing that game anymore. I'm sorry, you're not. You're just not. Um, you can you can take a house, right? You can take a, a ranch style home, and you can paint it, and you can put furniture in it, and you can put wallpaper on it. You can even add things to it, add rooms, subtract rooms. But at the end of the day, it's still a ranch home, and it still will never ever be a Victorian mm-hmm. unless you tear the whole thing down and build a Victorian home. Or you go out and you buy another Victorian home. Um, I, I equate this a lot um, to role-playing games because no matter how much you want to make the system something it's not, you're not going to. Mm-hmm. You just can't. And the moment that you do, it's not that game anymore. Um, you can home rule all kinds of stuff, and it's great. I mean, I can add sanity to Dungeons & Dragons, and it's still Dungeons & Dragons. I can take... Um, certain classes away and races away from it, and it's still Dungeons mm-hmm. and Dragons. But the moment I change that D twenty to a D one hundred, it's not really Dungeons and Dragons anymore. It's become a different system. Yep. Um, the moment that I remove combat, combat from it, it's no longer Dungeons and Dragons. It's I don't know um, what's that card game? Love Letter. Honestly, it's Love Letter at that point. Um, instead of yep. you know you've got dice to do the system instead of cards. Um, if you remove the role play from it. Then it becomes a board game. So you need those three things to really make a game what it is. So know your rules. Know how the game is supposed to be played. You don't have to be perfect. And by all means, none of us are freaking perfect. I remember my uh, my very first time that I GM'd, and I think I talked about this in another video, our GM didn't show up for like the third or fourth time. Uh, and obviously, he was just done with, with GMing. And I was like, you know what, to hell with it. And I picked up that third edition book over there. And I said, all right, guys, roll up characters. Never had I ever picked up that DMG before mm-hmm. and really got into it. And we ran a game. And honestly, it was one of the, the coolest, funnest, most unbalanced, <laughs> stupidest game that uh, I ever ran in the 20 plus years of, of jamming that I've done. But, you know, the players had a good time and we continued on from there. You learn. You learn as a GM because jamming is an art form. Okay. Don't let yes. anybody take that from you. <sighs> Not anybody can, can, can run a game, okay? Um, let me take that back. Not everybody can run a game well, okay? So you can put a canvas in front of anybody and you can give them a paintbrush and they'll paint something, but it doesn't mean it's good. And that's what game mastering is, okay? You, your canvas is that table. Your brush is this book. And you are telling a story. You are writing a story. You are a writer. You are an actor. You are a voice actor. You are a puzzle master you are a sociologist you're a movie wrapped into one yeah you are you are everything and that's that's a whole other topic almost about you know understanding what your role is and accepting it and not letting people tear that down Mm -hmm. everybody everyone has the capability of doing it with enough time and enough practice um i just wouldn't recommend picking up the book and saying all right i think i got it and sitting down without any kind of experience and, yep. and going for it. Also, you should be having fun. Make sure you're having fun. If you're having fun, <laughs> yeah. your players are having fun. And, and, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yep, absolutely. Um, a, lo- a large part of that is you you are creating that fun. And your players are creating that fun. Don't get me wrong. Don't let me take it away from the players either. Um, the players are just as important as your story is. And that is, you, you can't deny the, the impact that your players have on the game. Um, without mm-hmm. the players, you can't have a game. Without the you know the GM, you can't have a game. Everyone can try to GM. Not everyone's going to be great at it, and that's okay. But if you like doing it and your players like doing it, then don't worry about it. If it's your first time, and I think this video got brought up because you found a, a post about a first-time GM, right? Yep. Like they froze. Yep, they were talking yeah. about freezing. Just absolutely froze. Yep. So the nerves got to them. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> I will say my first time GM and probably the first two times was a rough to get through. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you do? I, you, at a certain point, you just swallow it and go. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like you just jump off the cliff. Okay. Jump out the plane. You just do it. So. Got you. And to me, it, it's it's helped because it's broken me out a little bit. I can do, t- guarantee you, I wouldn't be here right now doing a YouTube video if I hadn't first broke out of that with right. that first GM or that even that first RP session. Yeah. It's a, 
it is an amazing experience. It is absolutely an amazing experience to um, tell that story, play that game, and have your players 100% on board with you and having those experiences with them. And if you freeze up, if the time comes where you get out there and you freeze, just remember that it's just a game. I mean, honestly, don't you are probably being harder on yourself than your players ever will be because we're all worse critics, right? Yep. Um, you look at it, you look at your notes, you're like, oh crap, this isn't gonna work, you know? And you know, maybe you haven't developed that improvisational skill yet. Um, it will come with time, uh, with time and with exercise. Give yourself the opportunity to to gain those skills, um, and a lot of that is by you know either doing it yourself, a little bit of imitation. Um, it, if you freeze, I, I guess my best advice for you would be to just take a minute, um, take a deep breath, uh, and just go for it. Just, just, just go. Jump out the plane. That's right. Just, just get it. So on top of having all your, your rules ready to go and, and knowing your system, there are two schools of thoughts when it comes to starting to GM. You can either run through a pre-made module. Um, which will pretty much give you, you know, what you need to do X, Y, Z. What you need to say. Yeah. What, yep. what you need to pretty much. You know, all the prompts. The 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 wall is slimy and full of moss yep. or something. Um, that's that's pretty good. That is, a, that is a really good way that a lot mm -hmm. of people like to do it. Um, I did it off the cuff on the time. Uh, I've never really been a fan of modules just because I like to have my own stuff. But that's just me. Um, there are plenty of great modules out there from you know Cobalt Press. Or from you know Chaosium, they've done some wonderful ones for Call of Cthulhu, um, Pathfinder. It's all of Pathfinder Society. I mean, they they pump out modules like yeah. crazy, and they're so well written. Um, if that is your thing, if you're a first time GM, I would, I would, I would look at it. I would absolutely look at a, a nice, easy level zero through three module, mm -hmm. or uh, if it's Cthulhu, for example, one that's you know going to wrap up in about two to four hours a single session, and learn that module. And by learning that module, you will learn the rules better because it'll put the situations together. Yeah. So it'll be like, ah, oh, well, they they walk into this room and there's a there's a trapped chest in the corner, and so they need to roll a DC 15 to pick the lock. Yeah. And so instead of reading just the black and white, that's like, well, this is how you do this, and this is how you do this. It gives you some situational stuff to work yeah. from that you can be like. It's oh. almost a uh, learn as you play. Mm -hmm. It's yep. basically a quick start learn as you play that you would see on a board game. Yep. The quick play. Put Quick play rules. <laughs> uh, I, I highly recommend. Uh, we did the D and D fifth edition uh, when it was D and D next with the play test, um, and we really liked the system and we wanted to support it. Um, I bought the starter set when it first came out. I highly, highly, highly suggest that if you were coming into fifth edition, to forget all these other books and just buy the starter set. Um, it comes with the basic rules, and honestly, you can find the basic rules online for free anyway. Um, but it comes with a really nice little module. Um, mm -hmm. It's super easy to read. It's a fun little module. It's like, I think it's Lost Minds of Fendelver, or however it's pronounced, is what it is. Uh, we played it, remember we played it at Gen Con yep. that year. And uh, it was- Dice, yeah, I mean, they, they pretty much- Yeah, it came with everything. Character sheets, everything. Pre, they're pre-gen character sheets, um, which is nice, especially if you're a first time GM, yep. because you don't have to worry about some weird stuff popping up at your table, like maybe someone that likes to optimize, or yep. uh, numbers crunch, or some weird, combination of things like a blind wizard or something yep. and it, which comes across your table sometimes so you know they're, they're pre-generated and it keeps it a nice contained um, packet for you um, and there are there's starter boxes for a lot of games if yep. you look for them out most there most of them include them now yep which is wonderful yep they're not too bad i think that one was about 35 dollars um or somewhere on that range and then if you like it if you like you know playing the game then yeah absolutely go ahead and get the rest of your books you know, advise your friends to get the player's handbooks. Really the best thing to do is look out there. Um, you can get on Facebook and you can get, get on social media. There are tons of tips. Um, if you are afraid to talk to your players about certain things, um, ask the internet. Uh, for the most part, uh, the internet will be kind, um, mm -hmm. especially to uh, Twitter is incredible, um, phenomenal community. There's really no negativity there mm -hmm. at all. Um, Reddit sketchy. At times, um, Facebook's not too bad. If you want to join one of the, if you go to the search bar and you search whatever game that you're wanting to play or run, and search it. And I guarantee you there's probably a GM. So it'll be like Starfinder GMs or Pathfinder GMs. Or there's yeah. uh, a couple that are just uh, general game mastering or storytelling. Get in there and ask your questions. You'll get answers. You will, you will get all the answers that you need pretty up, pretty up front. 
So if you have an idea for a game and you, you're not sure how to present it to your players, um, obviously do the session zero that we, we talked about in another video, um, but ask them those questions first and they will get you a pretty quick answer, usually within like an hour or so, sometimes faster. Um, so that's always a, a great resource for people. Well, with that being said, don't forget to let us know down below um, what are some tips that you have for that you wish you had either known when you first yeah. started GMing or you know what what do you think you should know to GM right now? I wish I was better at math when I first started GMing because <laughs> I started GMing in, in third edition and uh, the the amount of rules that is in third edition is a little bit yeah a little bit crunchier. Yep. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that, but the amount of math that was involved um, really. I wish I was better at math. <laughs> so let us know down below. Hit that like, subscribe button, smash the bell, do something. I don't know. We, we need it or something. YouTube <laughs> says we got to have it. So anyway, we'll see you next week. Yep. You guys have a good afternoon. Yeah, take it easy.